satanic panic nightmare ends wrongful conviction dismissed after 30 years and a triumphant end to a three decade long nightmare rooted in the infamous satanic panic melvin quinley a san antonio man wrongfully accused and imprisoned for leading a allegedly let me be clear leading a satanic cult and committing sexual abuse has finally been exonerated Quinley's ordeal began amidst a contentious divorce in 1990 when his wife accused him of heinous crimes tied to satanic rituals. His children, then influenced by their mother, therapists, and law enforcement, developed false memories of abuse and occult practices. Quinley was sentenced to 20 years in prison and served eight before his release. His conviction carried heavy burdens, including a uh, mandatory sex offender registry and estrangement from his children. With the unwavering support of the Innocence Project of Texas and his youngest son, Matthew, Quinley managed to reopen his case, leading to his full exoneration after his oldest son, John, recanted his previous testimonies. Quinley can now finally look forward to a future free from the terrors of the past with the hope of reconnecting with his family. So this is wild. Let me give more background. So in the 1990s, this man, he was married, had some kids, and when he was getting divorced, his wife basically seized upon the satanic panic happening at the time, which is like all absolute moral panic hysteria nonsense. And even the most famous cases of the satanic panic that happened, like those people have been exonerated. Um, and she basically convinced her son, who was only 10 years old at the time, John, that he had been put through horrific, devious, depraved abuse by his father. To the point that John, little John, when he was 10 years old or around that age, had to go on the stand and testify against his father with these very sick graphic details of things that he had been made to believe and convinced had happened to him because they were like just the adults in his life were constantly reinforcing to him that yes this has happened that the positive memories that you have with your father are actually your brain trying to cover up the fact that you've been through something this horrific like completely just gaslighting this child into like another realm to convince him that this is real, get him on the stand and testify against his father. And this really happened. And his dad was sentenced to 20 years and he had to serve eight years on this, eight, eight years years. in prison on this as someone who was accused of crimes that are this horrific. Now, if you live in America, I do not have to tell you about how serious that is when you're in our prison system. If you have that kind of a crime that you're accused of in our prison system, you have a target painted on your forehead and every day people are looking to end you. I am not joking. No. If you have a charge like that, they call it a jacket. If you're wearing a jacket, if you have a jacket within prison culture, one of the primary ways in which people gain status and credibility within the other prison gangs is to take you out. No questions asked, especially if you're close to someone who's serving a life sentence. So it's extremely dangerous to be put in that position. And he had to serve eight years in that prison. What do you understand? The jacket is what? Like somebody who... That's prison slang for someone who has a charge related to anything bad with minors. Children. Okay. okay, Yeah. And so I'm like just thinking about the risks to his life that he went through during those eight years is insane for something that he never did. Mm. And then when he finally got out, he was completely estranged from his children. This is like a devious level of parental alienation, which is like a form of brainwashing. And what, 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 hap- what happened to the mom? I don't think anything happened to her. She died before like I can't remember how oh. recently she died, but she died. And so she's never going to be held accountable for what she put this man through. No. All over this satanic panic nonsense. And I think mm. D really wanted me to cover this story, our lovely editor D, because I 
I kind of like forgot that this is something that still impacts people's life to this day. What happened in the early 90s and just the hysteria that was going on. And a new one is starting. I think I think the I think the trans panic is an extension of the satanic panic. I mean, some of them, I mean, some people who are against it literally tie the two directly together. They do think it's literally satanic. Yeah. 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 And all the book banning. Yeah. The LGBT yes. moral panic. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's yeah, been yeah. going on for a while. It kind of started with the anti-critical race theory thing. And then it just kind of evolved into like what it is now. Mm. It's absolutely oh, it wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We should. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy for this man. He was awarded a bunch of money by the state, you know, in, in recompense for him having to serve the sentence or, you know, eight years of his sentence. And he, he this, he's so sweet. He was like, I'm going to hopefully with this money, I can go move closer to my family and like no. make up for lost time. Oh, yeah. But now he finally gets to be free of this and he doesn't have to be on any sort of registry all for something he never did to his children. Mm. Like to have be robbed of that relationship of your with your children in this way is horrific. Absolutely horrific. And there are people out here who do, I mean, even if it doesn't have a satanic blend or flavor, they convince their children that their father had done this to them. Mm. To be able to alienate their children. It's sick. It is absolutely sick. Hmm. And if you if you if you manipulate your children into believing in something like that, I have no sympathy for you. I have no sympathy for any consequence that comes from you doing that to your former spouse. It's reprehensible, unforgivable, and ugh. Yeah. Right now we're looking for video editors. Video editors would be working with me. Graphic designers. I think graphic designers would be working with Susie. Um, uh, grant research and writing assistant. They would be working with Susie. Team coordinator or volunteer applicant ma application managers. They would be working with me. English to Persian translators. They would be working with me. Voiceover narrators would be working with me. High profile guests. Uh, finder and coordinator that they would be working with me that position live event speaking opportunity hunter that would be working with Susanna uh, news cur curator and writer that would be working with Susanna art team manager and payment coordinator that's a position that would be working with Susanna financial coordinator and bookkeeper that's a position that would be working with Susanna uh, social media manager that's a position that would be working with me a Drupal web developer, that's another position that we're working with Susanna. And lastly, live stream co-host in the background, most likely, unless somebody is really good. Um, you know, that would be for maybe secular jihadist recording videos, or if they speak Persian for maybe for Persian, uh, the show, that would be working with me. Again, the link to the application for volunteers is in the description and also in the live stream. Um, so if you want to join our team as a volunteer, please consider doing so.